A few of you people would know me uh, from my LinkedIn posts and so forth, but for those who don't, I'm Brett Davis. Uh, I work as a structural geology consultant, and at the moment I've had the privilege of being invited here to Columbia to work with the guys with Collective Mining and to have a look at their project, in particular um, the Apollo deposit, which is sort of the mainstay of their project at the moment. And this is not going to be a long video and there's a lot of stuff to put into it, so I've tried to draw a bit of a sketch that summarises the overall architecture of the system. Significantly, uh, the size of this thing, I've not worked on a breccia system of this scale before. So this deposit is dominated by a breccia, which is not really a pipe, it's like an upside down carrot. It tapers from surface down to as far as we've drilled so far, which is over a kilometre, and it's getting wider as we go down. We think we're near the top of the system, so the beauty of this is we've preserved all of the mineralisation which is hosted within the breccia. The other thing is, at the moment, the width of it is something like 400 metres, and that is a massive zone of high permeability rock. The other significant thing is there's at least three distinctive styles of mineralisation here, and that's based on textures, it's based on overprinting, it's based on mineralogy, uh, it's based on the cross-cutting relationships. And if we look at them in context, the first one is a porphyry style, which is not really part of the overall mineralised system that we're exploring for, and that's in the host intrusions which then get brecciated up. Once the breccia has come in, we've got this stuff that they call BAM, which is a breccia angular mineralised. Then we've got what's called ramp zone mineralisation, which is down quite deep. But the other significant thing is that is we've actually clipped the top of that, I think. And the deeper we drill, the more and more sulphide and the better grades we're getting. And that there looks to be associated with another intrusive episode as well, which We've called P58, each of the porphyries that have contributed to this. We've given it a P number, starting with P10 through to P50, which is the early stages. P55 seems to be the one that causes the brecciation. P58 then contributes to what we call ramp zone mineralisation. But then we have this other stuff that we call BAM, which is all of this through here. And basically it's breccia infill. And when we look at the overall architecture of this, it's not a pipe, it's got an ovoid cross-section in plan and really significantly it looks like it's bound on the sides by these planar structures and we see elements of those structures preserved as class with inside the, uh, the breccia. So there's early high temperature shear zones which have been broken up and they represent the early permeability and that permeability has then controlled the shape of this breccia pipe but more importantly, what it's done is it's allowed these fluids to keep coming up subsequently and enter that pipe as they go up the sides and then ingress in from the margins. These faults have an asymmetry about them which is reflected on both sides and it's reflected in the mineralisation. So the BAM, even though it's Brexia hosted, there's actually a preferred orientation to it. There's two main orientations. One is a steep northwest southeast striking orientation the other one is a linking structure, which is a lower order one. So the first order ones are very steep, parallel to these structures on the margins. The subordinate structures are what we call second order ones. And when you plot them on the map, what you find is there's a low east plunge to the intersection line. So significantly, we may have good grade continuity with a relatively low plunge where those intersect. And we see that same asymmetry repeated time and again. We see the same asymmetry with the fractures in the ramp zone and we see the same asymmetry with this late carbonate-based metal mineralisation, which overprints everything. So it's telling us that these faults have been fundamental in the evolution of this, and we've had an imposed tectonic stress in addition to all this hydrolytic, hydraulic, hydrofracturing that's going on to produce the breccia. And those two things have produced a really, really efficient permeability network. So we start off with the BAM, which is the fluids coming into the breccia, we then, from overprinting, know that the ramp zone is probably associated with another mineralised porphyry down here, which is putting fluids into structures of the same geometry. Then later on, we have these carbonate-based metal veins, and they add a significant contribution to the gold. And the other important thing about that is these systems overlap. So when we get them coming together, we have a perfect storm of mineralisation. 
Knowing all of this orientation data is now allowing us to be predicted with this, so we can start working out where we can expect to see more of this mineralisation. And the other things we're noting is that even though we have a unit here which is a big Brexia body, it does look like there's an association of some of these high grade mineralised systems with some of these planar features. So we're not just limited to the mineralisation within the Brexia. We're seeing stuff extending beyond that within the primary permeability network. And overall, this is one of the most amazing systems I've looked at. We've got several stages of porphyry development. We've got three major stages of mineralisation, which are piggybacking on top of early porphyry mineralisation. We've got some fantastic textures from a scientific point of view. So I'm looking at this from a selfish point of view where I just love looking at these rocks. And it's, um, it's bloody big. <laughs>